morning again. This is my third audio for the day. It is now 7:33 a.m. Tuesday, June 25, 2019. I was just thinking about something.、Um, Can this YouTuber who used to be a member of the Jehovah Witness and her awakening process? She may mention to another YouTuber's name, and he is—he、uh, was a former minister, and he wants to awaken. I gather that he's no longer a Christian, but he's—he's he's appealing. To those who are still in Christianity or old religion, the Abrahamic religions, and so that's just what I'm listening to now. But one of the the titles of his video is something to the effect that、uh, Bible prophecy is what keeps the Matrix to have its stronghold on us. Okay. Again, I'm not going to mention these、uh, YouTubers by name, but it had me thinking. It's a yeah, that's thunder. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> yeah, it's thundering right now. I just saw the lightning. Yes, my poor little boy. He's a little scared right now. Okay, let me just get him. He's scared. Okay. Well, anyway. Oh, he wants to get up. Let me. I have a hot thing of tea, and I don't want. Oops! I knew he was going to do that. Soon, I moved the tea because I because I was going to grab him. He jumped on the bed. Okay, because I don't. <laughs> so I kind of know these dogs. Okay, my apology. Yeah. So just sit down. It's okay, baby. Yeah. He's looking at me. He wants me to comfort him. Okay, yeah. Let me share with you again what I was going to say, guys. Well, the the talk reminds me. It 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 brought my memory on something. This movie that I saw with Ben Affleck, and it was a time machine, and he had. Helped develop this time machine with this other person, and、uh, other people want to exploit this technology. And really, it was just a power, you know, a, a lust for power. Yeah, there it goes. That's that thunder again. So, what happened in that movie was、um, again he he. They had removed his memory. It's okay, baby. Yeah, my my little dog is climbing on me because he's afraid of the thunder. It's okay, baby. Oh, don't shake. It's okay, mommy. It's okay. Sit down. Okay. My apology, guys. It's okay. Nah,、no, mother dog. Uh, watch the tea. Watch the tea. Yes, I have hot tea on my lap. Okay, so in the movie,、um, he like he builds this machine, and then they have to wipe his memory. But isn't that what life is like here? You know, this with this reincarnation thing. They put you on this planet to do something, but before you come here, they erase your memory. Just food for thought with that. It just that just popped in my head, but anyway. So you have the machine, and when he he has to now try to rem, try to remember what happened. But he left himself clues, so that he could awaken. At least, you know, the clues will help him get to his destination, and that is ultimately to. Destroy the time machine because it was it's it's discovered that how the time machine works 
when you tell people their future, it, it sticks on them and you act out and you create what you're told. So they gave a, a doom and gloom. And so, even though it didn't happen yet, people lived according to that scenario and ultimately the, the planet uh, perished. So with the Bible, the Bible has a doom and gloom at the, at the book of Revelation. Even though the book of Revelation is not actually, it, w it wasn't the, the last written scripture, but it's placed in the last position to really emphasize the doom and gloom that this is the last page. And so, I'm thinking with this YouTuber that said about Baba Prof. Bible prophecy, it was the fuel of the matrix. Now, how this matrix would work then, what keeps this stronghold is, is the prophecy it, itself. You are creating, you are doing magic. That's the point. You're, you're doing magic and you don't even realize. You're saying, I profess X, Y, and Z. And you tell that to enough people and yes, a lot of things will happen as a result of that doom and gloom. And that's what they're relying on. They're relying you on you to kill yourself. Maybe this is what they call the, the, the Dracos. Hey, let's create this Abrahamic religion. And you notice the other religions, they don't have the same problem. You have a lot of different faith systems or na nature religions, and you don't see them putting GMOs in the food. You don't see the corruption or the perversions that go on. Why do you have it? Well, we were hijacked. This Bible hijacked continents of people. And it's a magic, it's like an energy. What you profess, whether verbal or in writing, is projecting your thoughts, which would later come into fruition if you believe in it enough. And it's like a mantra that well, that's why they want you to keep on going to church, keep on going to church. If you don't if you miss church, you're a bad person. And you get um, kicked out of the community. So that's fair. So you might as well tag along, go to church and get brainwashed that particular things are going to happen. Or you get brainwashed about certain races or nationalities that, that, that this group is bad and this group is bad. And you may have never seen that group before. But because the Bible allegedly says X, Y, and Z about certain people, and you act it out, and you act it out, and you act it out, this adds momentum and strength to a matrix system, a matrix of control. Again, it's all about control. It's all about controlling you, the masses. If you're living on this planet, it includes you. Some of us are given different positions, but ultimately, you go against that system, regardless of race, color, anything, nationality, it will bite you in the nose. All of us are under the subjection of this system, but some of us are placed in in higher positions of, of favor but that favor will only go so far and it'll end if you go against the system. So that's how I realized that we're all slaves. And yes, sometimes you get overwhelmed and you see the same groups in power, whatever. 
but in actuality, they're they're like the what do you call it, the slave driver. That wasn't a glamorous position during slavery days in the Americas. It was a filthy position, and it destroys your love for humanity. For you to do what you're doing, you have to remove your humanity and become a violent person. And eventually, violence will consume you. And I think it's that violence that consumed those whites during the gold rush in America. Remember there was a gold rush? And that's when you had all those stories about the what they call the wild, wild west. What did the people do in the wild, wild west? They were primarily white folks who had guns and just started shooting up people. Just shooting up and robbing people. You didn't have uh, former black slaves doing that. So why do you find this other group, this white group that I thought was privileged? Not all white people were privileged during slavery. I was told that only 2% of the white population in the United, what we know as the United States of America were slave owners. So that leaves 98%. So if you weren't a landowner and to make money off of that land to be competitive, you too had to be a slave owner and have slave drivers to push your slaves to work beyond their comfort zone. So that's where it is. We're all under this matrix of control. We're all being deceived. We're all put in, be, being put upon fear. It's a fear uh, collar that we have around our necks. If we don't do this, the slave job, if I don't do this, uh, they'll, they'll re-enslave me. I was an indentured, uh, indentured slave slash servant. And if I don't do what master tells me, he's going to take away my freedom and I have to work another seven years and get abused. See? See what fear is? And so again, with this uh, prophecy, again, it's magic. You speak out of your mouth, and you say it long enough, and you start to act out. Why do those people that you see on the street doing drugs, well, a lot of times their family tells them that they're no good. And they say this over and over again at key points of their lives, and they can't break out of it. Look at all those people in California, not California, uh, Washington, and I think Oregon also. I've never s seen so much misery. And a lot of them are white people, and that's what's shocking me. White people. And many of them from middle class, upper middle class homes. And they were telling that story, and they were acting insane. I've watched how the black people here in New York City, where I live, I see how they act. They don't act any, any more, in fact, they act even more sane than those whites on the West Coast. They are totally, totally bonkers. The blacks here are just persecuted and feeling down on themselves because of racism. And then some of them just kind of get kind of off too. But it's different. It's what's causing it. What's driving their, their, their emotions. I think the whites in California are being mind controlled. Again, California, Washington State, Oregon... They all have what they call that that um, Silicon Valley, I think they call it, where all the technologies are, the computer, the the technologies, all that. You don't think they do an experiment on the people that live there? Where do you get your guinea pigs from? Well, where you live. 
Who lives there? Remember at one point that the West Coast forbade uh, black people from moving in? And, and yes, and what I was going to say about the Wild Wild West, during the 1850s and 60s, he had tons of white people, most likely the 98% that were not slave owners, who were probably slave drivers, couldn't really make money, taking their hostilities out on the black slave, right? And then they was told that there's gold out there. Now, I don't know how true that was. Was it a lot of gold or was it just a trinket? And then they said there was oil. There was a big oil rush. And you saw how those whites acted. The nouveau rich. And they were so... I guess I would imagine they were, these people, before this gold rush, this gold fever, that they were oppressed mentally. And when you get someone who's oppressed mentally and then given this opportunity to be like the boss, it goes to their head and they went berserk and they start shooting and killing their own kind and killing Indians all this and then fast forward the technologies it's all a gold rush it's all a silicone rush of technologies and industry and they're killing themselves they're they're doing things with the the sky like like it's been raining like one day on one day off one day on one day off it's, it's a rainstorm right now. It was not like this before. You have what, what, the, the climate change and, and the, the, the chemtrails. And all. See, this is trying to produce this doomsday because, again, they're usually of the Abrahamic faith or culture, and they're acting out this doomsday they, they lost sanity. They, they, they poisoned their own food. They poisoned their own water. They're poisoning their own health. They're poisoning their own school system where their own children go to. And it's all like that prophecy they projected. It's like a curse. Curse is so-and-so, right? What do they mean? Program. The Bible is a program system slash curse inducing. It is a curse inducing system of control. And what you see now is the fruit of that curse. See, I was raised that the black was the cursed one. But in actuality, anyone living down here is cursed because of what people put out in the ether. And like magic, it is coming into fruition. That's what real magic is about. Magic is about channeling that energy. <clears throat> when I mean channel, meaning directing the energy in a path to manifest on what you are visualizing. And I think <clears throat> imagination is a type of magic. It's the beginning of it. And if you think and visualize it strong enough, that perhaps it will come into fruition also. It's created. Where do, dream where do dreams come from? Like I said earlier, that I was, I, was, I was dreaming. And what I was dreaming was being influenced by uh, a video that was playing in the background. And it was in being, being incorporated in my dream. But in the dream, I can see things, I can hear things, I can touch things. 
it seemed real. So where do dreams come from? It seems real when it's happening. You're interacting, you're seeing things. Just like here, you're seeing, engaging with others. I think this is all part of the magic. And you could kind of make it happen. Wow. So, this is really something. Yeah, we're making things happen. It's not Bible prophecy. It is a program of control. That's all. And they can make it sound nice. And say, well, Jesus said this was going to happen, and he's a good guy. So you have, again, the duality. One person saying, this is going to happen. Another person taking the sound on the other, saying, no, we want that to happen. And it's just a back and forth. Back and forth. This is, again, um, connecting the dots in this series, June 25th, 2019. Take care, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.